So here we are again at my beautiful messed up art table. And I am working on little collections of forest floor drawings. And this is going to be a mushroom town. I was trying to make it not precious when I worked on all these things. And I say that word a lot because sometimes it's really hard to make art because you're constantly thinking you have to like do something with it, give it away, sell it, make it presentable to the world when really it doesn't need to do any of those things. It just needs to be there for you. So I've already done a few pieces and you can tell I, at the top there I've um, worked on just color palettes and made sure that it wasn't a big deal. So I could cut it up or I could scan it. I could do whatever I need to do with it, but it wasn't important enough that I had to worry about that it was a final piece. I could do what I needed to do. This is another practice with underpainting using um, Payne's Blue. And you see right there in the corner, I have Payne's Blue. I have a brown, which I have to go look up the name of, and I'll write it in the comments. And I know I have a gray. Um, but I am doing an underpainting, trying to put in the shadows first before I go on and put the color on. It, it, it's just a practice I've been doing to see if I like it better. It does make everything far more richer. So I do enjoy doing it. It's just a lot more work and it takes a lot more time. I did not do an underpainting on any of the ones above. So this was an experiment to see if that worked any better. I think it made everything real deep, much more deep. But it was a good practice to go in and do with. I think I'm using a number two brush. And I'm not sure what that paper is. I have so many papers, but I know it has a yellowish tint to it, which really bothers me. I like it when it's pure white, and this one I don't think has. I think it's just a little bit of like a very soft yellow tint. objective was to not be green. I didn't want to be green. I wanted to focus on forest floor colors. So deep browns and dark greens are also going to be in there, but I needed it to reflect what a forest floor looked like. Since I've already done the underpainting, it was important for me to lay down what I wanted my first wash to be, which I think is mummatite. I'm really glad that nobody comments in there saying, hey, you should write that down. One day I will for you, but not today. Not today. <laughs> um, I do know that there is German ochre, German green in there mixed with, I think, mummy. What I call it. Oh, it's not the name. It is a Daniel Smith color, though. And laying down these colors to give that forest floor color, which is a lot of browns. A lot of browns. And then at the bottom, I will put in those deep greens and add that pop but to incorporate it I always think of it like a pinwheel that I have to add everything into that image so if I'm gonna have green on bottom I have to have green on top I wish I had put more brown in the bottom of the painting but I didn't I left it very very green but it's okay it works but as your eye moves around an image I like it when I can pick up different hints of other elements so it's all connected
laying in my texture now of the underneath on the bottom half of the mushroom. Every part of me wanted to say shaft and I totally didn't do it. I was like, no, that's dirty, but now I've said it. So there you go. Um, the shaft of the mushroom to give it that texture of it being worn and having those like crinkly lines and how it's just kind of like muddled and messy. Um, there's been so much drawing in between adding back all the darkness. Hindsight, I wish I had used indigo blue mixed with my brown because I'm pretty sure I did not use it enough. If I had used that, I could have darkened it way faster. And since it already had an underpainting, that might have been why I didn't, but to add more darkness to it quicker had I not used underpainting, that's probably where I would have gone, but hindsight, I think it would have helped darkening it even faster. Because even though I did have the underpainting, it it wasn't as dark as I wanted it. That's why you keep seeing me do so many layers. But giving that texture of those lines to the shaft of the mushrooms gave it so much depth. I loved it. It just, it brought it to life and gave it that rounded look. <laughs> trusty copic white opaque paint this is such a small piece that again I didn't leave much white behind and doing the underpainting didn't help either it's a practice I need to get back into by leaving white spaces but I am adding in more white I'm making this a mixed media painting but I don't care I want the edges of the mushroom cap to be white because I didn't leave enough. It was just too dark. I put too much of the um, Payne's blue down in the beginning, adding highlights from where the roofs will have light hitting it and just pretty much go into town with this white. I use it to add in flowers in my greens and sometimes I'll go back and add color on top of it show more flowers because it's so little you can't put detail but you can give the idea of having flowers the copic is nice because you can water it down and make it blend so easily where it doesn't have to be so in your face it, it's really negotiable how you can use it it lifts really well and it's almost like using a white watercolor. Like when you do um, handmade paints, the whites are typically better than if you were to go by Daniel Smith, I found. They have more substance to them and they are more opaque and less translucent. This is probably my last time talking about the painting. I'm gonna go into doing the grass in a minute. I wanna thank you for watching my video and I hope you have a wonderful day and go paint something.